Uh, great game. Proud of my football team, my staff. Uh, it was not an easy week. Uh, challenged our football team uh, right after the Georgia game that this, uh, this would be a defining game. That's hard to do uh, after playing a very emotional game against Georgia to come out as the head coach and tell your team this week will be a defining game. Uh, you know, in some instances that's not very fair, but uh, we challenged them. They accepted the challenge. The staff accepted the challenge. And um, they responded. Um, you know, they were uh, exactly what I wanted them to be was um, they were determined. Uh, they were persistent. They uh, didn't panic. Um, maybe teams earlier that I've had here would not have found a way to win that game. Uh, but this is a group that has... Um, really developed uh, a uh, persistence about them and the way they do things on a day-to-day -day basis. This is not just about playing football. This is about the way they do things every single day. And uh, it showed up. Um, Virginia has played extremely well in the second half and has won games in the second half. And we, we took over that game in the second half. So really proud of our staff, really proud of our players and a really good win against uh, the 18th ranked team in the country. So with that, we'll open up the questions. Awesome. Brian, obviously eight sacks from the defensive line today. Just kind of <laughs> speak a little bit about what the game plan maybe was coming into today, and obviously they executed it to almost perfection there. Yeah, look, we didn't go in thinking eight sacks was the margin here. The ball comes out really quick. Obviously, um, Perkins played flawlessly in the first half. 20, I think, of 23. Uh, the ball came out accurately, on time, made great throws. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the pocket collapsed on him and made it difficult for him to get outside and improvise. Um, and we stuck with our game plan. Again, I challenged our staff to be stubborn and persistent and determined, and we did that. And it broke through for us. Uh, in a manner that uh, we saw a lot of those sacks uh, really come together in the second half. And then Akora specifically, just yeah. an unbelievable game from him. And to see him finally get the sack numbers and the forced fumbles and all that goes with it, I guess, just speak a little bit to his performance. and just uh, Ju Julian, uh, I love what Julian did. He, he got back to playing... Uh, really physical football. Um, I think Julian would tell you that maybe um, the whole kind of sack thing, you know, was was too much of a, a personal thing, and he got back to playing physical football and within the the realm of the defense, and it really showed itself today. And and uh, he's gonna he's gonna take off from here. I'm back. Uh, Brian, with those with Virginia scoring at the end of the first half and then the onside kick to start the second half, what was kind of the message to overcome those potentially like momentum? Swings? I didn't have time to make any messages. There was no talk. Um, just keep playing. Keep playing. Our defense stepped up there. Um, you know, we didn't execute very well there, obviously. Um, you know, our job, uh, I know Brian pulled them over right before that kick because they took the win. Uh, they, they kicked into the wind. So we kind of were like, okay, why are they kicking into the wind here? Um, so we alerted our guys to uh, be, be alert here. Um, and we were not. Um, so just said, keep, keep playing. And uh, our defense did, came up with a big stop there. Yeah, we you know, you don't have much time under those circumstances, uh, you know, to have a, you know, a sit down and, and, and talk. It's just like, keep playing, be determined, be stubborn. We'll figure it out. Um, over here. 178 to four rush yards to opponent rush yards. Is this kind of what you envisioned when you spoke in the preseason about defining the season by success, establishing the run and stopping the opponent run? Yeah, I, you know, look, we're still – I'm not standing up here and telling you we have found ourselves offensively. We have not. We are – we're far from where we want to be. We, we've got a lot of things to sort out and figure out offensively, personnel. Um, but what we did is we gave Tony Jones a break. 
<laughs> so he he ran hard in the second half and in particular the third and fourth quarter when we got Sibo in there and we got Jameer in there it gave him a chance to run the way he can run and he's a hard runner we got off the ball we, we were much more physical in the third and fourth quarter what we want to be able to do is is have that as part of our offense and it, and it had been missing so that has to be part of what we do on the other hand you know from a rushing standpoint we want to continue to be a team that doesn't give up big plays in the running game. Four yards rushing, you know, a lot of that's the negative and the, obviously the sacks. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, finding a balance within our offense um, is something that is still a work in progress. But defensively, uh, continue to go in the route we're going with the development of our, our front seven and, and finding um, a really front, uh, a solid front seven that doesn't give up big runs. Brian, on your right, you might not have much, but anything on the injuries to Claypool, Crawford, and Hayes? Uh, Claypool rolled up his ankle, uh, so he was fighting through that, did, his, did it the best he could. Um, who was the other one? Crawford and Dalen. Crawford, uh, elbow, uh, we'll get an MRI on that, um, see where he is. And then uh, Dalen Hayes is a shoulder, and, and we'll get that looked at uh, here tomorrow. And you just mentioned the negative yards, which really limited that rushing total. You anticipated Perkins being a headache. How were you able to contain him and really limit his effect? Well, the, I mean, tactically, there's a lot of things that you can't do. Uh, you can't play a lot of man. You can't play a whole player because if you play a deep hole player, then the deep hole player's got the quarterback. And so, you know, he limits you in a lot of areas. So... <laughs> You know, we, we had to get a great pass rush, and we had to contain him with our front four. We had to put our corners on an island quite a bit and force him to throw the football, which he did. Give him credit. First half, he was great. In the second half, we were able to get to him quickly, quickly and he had to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And, and, and that was really the difference in the game uh, for us. They could not run the ball between the tackles when they wanted to run the football with, with a, you know, a five-and-a-half-man box. If they could, that would have required us to do other things. Thanks. Yep. Coach, last two weeks you've faced a pretty big defensive line in both Georgia and with Virginia. Um, Virginia was number one in the country in sacks. You kept them away from Book again. That's two weeks in a row, two big defenses, and you're, you know, you're keeping Book pretty safe. Yeah, I mean – it's we know how to protect. I mean, you know, we're look, it, it's it's kind of like one of these deals where what do you want to do? Do you want to free release the back and be in a five man? They're going to bring overload blitzes. I mean, so we had to settle in on some things in the second half that, um, uh, you know, we're a little bit more conservative in nature, but. We were looking to, to win the football game. Our defense was going to play well. And uh, so we made some, some tactical decisions at halftime to let our defense play. We were going to get the football. Um, we had some untimely penalties in that first drive. Um, but, again, I think we're doing a good job protecting our quarterback. Our quarterback's smart. We get in the right protections. Um, we, we've just got to be a little bit more efficient offensively. With the four-game rule to preserve a year of eligibility, I, it gives you a, a whole different aspect to consider. You guys ask so many questions that are so <laughs> difficult to answer. My goodness, my brain blows up talking to you guys. <laughs> I wish I could be at like a normal press conference sometimes. You guys are so smart. Whatever I mean, you, whatever you say, we'll quote you. Okay, really go matter. ahead. I mean, it's amazing. I, I wish I could just get you like pretty much say whatever hey, you guys you want ran tonight. really hard today. That was a great game. I mean, it's amazing. Go so ahead. I'm going to ask you about uh, Jameer Jones, and I know that you don't want to say you you went into this trying to preserve your eligibility, but he was he was on scout the, team this week. I know he said that. He I, I know oh, he said that. He but, was in front of you guys. Yeah. De, uh, okay. Well, you know more than I do. So de, see, so, that's the whole thing. You should get my wife up here. She knows more about this we, than I we do. We rarely have an opportunity to, to ask you about him. If you okay. could, if you could talk about his great assets. teammate. I mean, he's a stud. I mean, he's just he does everything we ask him to do. Great, great person. Uh, great teammate. Works his butt off and a really, really good football player. 
And if you can preserve your year of eligibility, you will, correct? I mean... I mean, yeah, that's why I say, if you can. I mean, maybe you, maybe you can't do that. Yeah, well, we're going to have to see what Dalen Hayes' situation is, to be quite frank with you. And, you know, we're here to win this year, and we'll figure it out from there. I've got nothing else. All right, thanks. <laughs> that's why my head hurts. <laughs> Uh, Myron saying that he was told that he was 21 miles an he, hour. No, he? no, he <laughs> was not. He, he was not. Okay, all right. And he can float that with you guys, but he was probably closer to 17 or 18. Why, why do we love watching the big guys run? And what, how much do, do players, the skill guys, enjoy watching the big guys run down the field? Well, I think if you pull for anybody, you pull for a guy like Myron. Um, a lot of this is about they love their teammates, they love the way they play. They love the fact that, um, you know, obviously he, he's a guy that played so well last week and then he gets rewarded this week. And, God, he almost got to the end zone too. And um, But but I think it's, it's more about uh, the guys that are rewarded for the hard work and being a great teammate. And he was injured last year and he's having great success this year. So, you know, it's a brotherhood. These guys really enjoy playing with each other. We've got a good group of guys. Um, they got challenged today. They responded to a great challenge. They were down at halftime. Uh, they didn't flinch. They didn't blink. They played really, really good football in the second half. I'm really proud of them. Thanks, guys. Thank you,